Oh, my necessaries are marked. Farewell. And, sister, as the winds give benefit and convoy is assistant, do not sleep, but let me hear from you. Do you doubt that? For Hamlet and the trifling of his favor. Hold it a fashion and a toy in blood, a violet in the youth of priming nature, forward, not permanent, sweet, not lasting, the perfume and suppliance of a minute, no more. No more, but so? Think it no more. Perhaps he loves you now, and now no soil nor cottle doth besmirch the virtue of his will. But you must fear, his greatness weighed, his will is not his own, for he himself is subject to his birth. He may not, as unvalued persons do, <laughs> carve for himself, for on his choice depends the health and safety of this whole state. And therefore must his choice be circumscribed unto the voice and yielding of that body whereof he is the head. Then if he says he loves you, it fits your wisdom so far to believe it as he in his particular act and place may give his saying deed, which is no further than the main voice of Denmark goes withal. Fear it, Ophelia. Fear it, dear sister. And keep you in the rear of your affection, out of the shot and danger of desire. I shall the effect of this good lesson keep as watchman to my heart. But, good my brother, do not as some ungracious pastors do, show me the steep and thorny way to heaven, whilst like a puffed and reckless libertine himself the primrose path of dalliance treads and wrecks not his own reed. <laughs> oh, fear me not. <laughs> oh, I stay too long. But look here, my mother comes. A double blessing is a double grace. Occasion smiles upon a second leave. Yet here, Laertes, aboard, aboard for shame. The whip sits in the shoulder of your sail, and you are stayed for. Bear my blessing with thee. And, and these few precepts in thy memory look thou character. Give thy thoughts no tongue, nor any unproportioned thought his act. Be thou familiar but by no means vulgar. Thou, the friends thou hast, and their adoption tried, grapple them unto thy soul with hoops of steel, but do not dull thy palm with entertainment of each new hatched, unfledged comrade. Beware of entrance to a quarrel, but being in, bear that the opposed may beware of thee. Give every man thine ear, but few thy tongue. Take each man's censure, but reserve thy judgment. Costly thy habit as thy purse can buy, but not expressed in fancy, rich, not gaudy. Uh, for the apparel oft proclaims the man, and they in France of the best rank and station are a most select and generous <laughs> Neither a borrower nor a lender be, for loan off loses both itself and friend, and borrowing dulls the edge of husbandry. But this above all, to thine own self be true, and it must follow as the night the day thou canst not then be false to any man. Farewell, <laughs> my blessing season is in thee. <laughs> Most humbly do I take my leave, madam. <laughs> oh, the time invites you go, <laughs> your servants tend. <laughs> Farewell, Ophelia, and remember well what I have said to you. Tis in my memory locked, and you yourself shall keep the key of it. <laughs> Farewell. <laughs> oh, what is to feel you he hath said to you? So please you? Something touching the Lord Hamlet? Ah, Mary, well bethought. Tis told me he hath very oft of late given private time to you, and you yourself have of your audience been most free and bounteous. If it be so, as so tis put on me, and that in way of caution, I must tell you, you do not understand yourself so clearly as it behooves my daughter and your honor. What is between you? Give me up the truth. He hath, lady, of late made many tenders of his affection to me. Affection? Pooh! You speak like a green girl, unsifted in such perilous circumstance. Do you believe he's these tenders as you call them? I do not know, lady, what I should think. Mary! 
I'll teach you. <laughs> Think yourself a baby that you have tamed these tenders for true pay, which are not sterling. Tender yourself more dearly, or not to crack the wind of the poor phrase, wronging it thus. You'll tender me a fool. Mother, he hath importuned me with love in honorable fashion. Aye, fashion you may call it. Go to, go to. And have given countenance to his speech, mother, with almost all the holy vows of heaven. Aye, <laughs> springes to catch woodcocks. I do know when the blood burns, how prodigal the soul lends the tongue vows. These blazes, daughter, giving more light than heat, Extinct in both, even in their promise as it is a making, you must not take for fire. From this time, be something scanter of your maiden presence. Set your entreatments at a higher rate than a command to parley. For Lord Hamlet, I believe so much in him that he is young, and with a larger tether may he walk than may be given you. In view of you, yet, do not believe his vows, but they are brokers, not of that die which their investments show, but mere implorators of unholy suits, breathing like sanctified and pious balls, the better to beguile. This is for all. I would not, in plain terms, from this time forth, have you so slander any moment leisure as to give words or talk with the Lord Hamlet. Look to it, I charge you. Come your ways. I shall obey, my lady. Mm -hmm.